Welcome to this week's episode of Eye on the Tigers. I'm Delaney Barrow, joined by Andy Hewling, and thank goodness there were no cancellations or postponements this week due to COVID. We have our usual slate of sports. Volleyball played last night and Wednesday, soccer plays tonight, and football will take on LSU at home tomorrow. So let's get into it. First up, we have volleyball. The Tigers traveled to Columbia to take on the Gamecocks Wednesday and Thursday, and unfortunately, they lost both matches. However, they did win one set on Thursday. Andy, the season is now halfway over. There's only eight matches in this regular season since it has been split into a fall and spring slate. There are only four remaining matches, both against SEC opponents. But do you think it's time to give up on this team and just kind of throw out this year and coin it as a rebuilding year? Or do you think the Tigers have time to turn the season around? They still have time, obviously. You know, it's been just a few games uh, played in the season. And like you said, they've got a whole slate in the spring that they can kind of build upon uh, to get better. Obviously, Brent Crouch has you know, not had enough time yet to fully get his uh, ideas and his philosophy into the team. But, you know, sure, it doesn't feel good to lose three games uh, in the SEC. I don't think they're going to be happy with that, but there was some hope that they got one set on the board finally this season, and they had a almost a program record of, of blocks in the game against South Carolina. So obviously they're playing defense, they're, they're playing tough uh, at the net, and I think Auburn you know, should be hopeful, but they're going to have to hopefully you know, start working to get victories under their belts. I agree. I think there's still time. I mean, if they were to win at least a few more sets, you have to take into the spring season into consideration. And they have been progressing a lot. I mean, yesterday, the mat each set was within four points, Auburn lost. And the one that they won, it was very close, but they did a great job of capitalizing on South Carolina's miscues. They were stellar at the service line. And they have lots of big names and talented players on that team, like Val Green, freshman Jackie Bradley, who had her debut on the road since she was injured last week at home and also Tatum Shipes and I think that all the big names on the team I mean that's just a few of them there's tons more but I think coach Crouch is really turning this program around and their determination and the fact that they didn't give up at any point during either day in South Carolina shows a lot about the team and the potential they have to turn this fall slate around. Next up is soccer. Soccer will travel to Arkansas tonight to take on the number six Razorbacks. The Tigers are ranked number 15, so this will be a top 15 matchup. But last week they ended in a tie against Kentucky, so they're still the last remaining unbeaten team in the SEC. But last week's game did go into double overtime. The Wildcats scored in the last 24 seconds of regulation to tie up the game. So that was a tough fight to the end. There's lots of grit and determination like we talked about last week. But Andy, what do you think the Tigers need to do going into this game against the Razorbacks in order to remain unbeaten? Well, obviously last year Arkansas came down to Auburn and blew them out in front of the home crowd. And Arkansas has been a really good team the last couple of years in the top 10 of mid-NCAA tournaments. And Auburn's going to have a tough task against them. They're going to have to defend well, but also their offense is going to have to keep scoring goals. I know they're, they've been able to kind of battle and fight for draws and then even close wins, but they're going to have to really be on the front foot in this match. I want to see, you know, Know, some of their attackers get, make good runs uh, to get scoring chances and I think Sarah Houchin on the defensive side is going to be the key for Auburn. She got a goal in the last game against Kentucky which gave them a big boost. They were unable to hold the lead but I think she's going to be a key uh, in the defensive plan but also if she can get forward and make chances especially off corner kicks and set pieces. I think this Tiger team really needs to be balanced if they want to walk out of Arkansas with a win. They've been very defensive heavy so far this year. Like you were saying, Sarah Houchin has been a standout player. Maddie Prohaska, the freshman goalie who was out last week due to a red card the prior week, she'll be back. But their filling goalie, the graduate transfer, she did a great job last week with her first career start at Auburn. But usually the Tigers are very defensive minded. I think this week they also need to focus on their offense because Arkansas is very offensive minded. So if the defense is able to shut down the Razorbacks, then the Tigers are going to need to score and have those key plays on offense in order to outscore Arkansas because there's no doubt they're going to get at least one or two goals in. 
they are just really on top of things when it comes to their leaders of the SEC West in scoring. So that says a lot about their team. But I think that if Coach Hoppe can just continue to coach the importance in, of need for balance on this team, I think that the Tigers have a really good chance of walking out of the Razorback Stadium with a win. This weekend, football is back on the plains as the Tigers host the rival Tigers from LSU in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Last week, the Tigers got a much-needed win over the Ole Miss Rebels after falling to the Gamecocks the previous week in their two-in-a-row away game streak. Andy, what was your main takeaway against last week's win in Oxford? Well, I thought Auburn was better offensively. They balanced the run in the pass very well, but I thought that they did what I was expecting them to do was run the ball more. They had Tank, you know, making a lot of big plays, but also DJ Williams and Sean Shivers got in on the act. So I thought overall the, the rushing attack was very uh, strong. Bo Nix even made some runs, including one rushing touchdown. I thought that was kind of the keys that Auburn pounded Ole Miss, uh, whose defense has just been a little off this year. They've been scoring a lot of points on offense, but their defense has just allowed a lot of points. And I thought Auburn was able to take advantage of that. But then also, you know, Bo Nix found Seth Williams quite a few times. So that connection seems to be mended after the South Carolina game where they were kind of going at each other. But I think they've put that away and they're, they seem to be, you know, back on the right track. And Auburn's defense, although they gave up 28 points, they still made two huge stops, one to give Auburn uh, the chance to win the game. And then at the end, they held Ole Miss after their after the offense scored and uh, we're, we're able to get the win uh, with an interception to seal the game. I think like you said the Tigers were very balanced last week and that was much needed. They definitely took a step toward that hard-nosed blue-collar Auburn football that coach Malzahn was preaching the week before and offensively they looked great on the ground. Bo Nix had a great performance on the road. I'm sure not a lot of people expected that due to how he performed with his several interceptions against South Carolina, but that was really great to see, and I think that that shows that he is feeling confident once again. He's shaken off those jitters of early that have taken place early in the season, and he is going to be in his prime this weekend, especially at home, home crowd advantage. I think that also the run game, like you said, they really came through and just shown when the passing game maybe wasn't entirely there. And while Auburn's defense did not look as great on paper, they did make those crucial stops that were necessary to keep the Tigers in the game. And if those plays had gone the other way, the Tigers would not have been able to win. So defense did come in clutch several times, but they just need to work on fixing those small things, those keys, like fundamentals. And Coach Malzahn, earlier in his press conference this week, he really emphasized how motivated the team was for this matchup, especially because the LSU currently has won the past several matchups, and especially that one in 2018 at home, heartbreaker loss for Auburn. And I think that he just talked about how the team kept improving each week, and even LSU has had improvements each week. And so both him and the team are very excited to host the Bayou Bengals this weekend. You know, you look at LSU and you see a team that each week has improved and uh, probably played their best game. You know, overall, they got a bunch of uh, you know new guys like we do, and you can tell they're improving. And of course, for us, last week was a really big road win. Uh, real proud of our guys that uh, the way that they won, they found a way to win. And I think three out of the four close games, you know, our guys have found a way to win, which uh, you know I really think is going to help us moving forward. I have no doubt this game will be a brawl until the very end. But Andy, what do you think the Auburn Tigers need to do in order to secure their win over the LSU Tigers? I look at two places. First is the secondary for Auburn has got to improve because LSU has really good wide receivers. I look at Terrence Marshall and um, some of their other uh, players. Even you know before he opted out, Jamar Chase would have played this game. So LSU's wide receivers were still strong, especially after their national championship run last year. And 
I think Auburn's secondary has been still giving up a lot of pass yards. They were they limited Ole Miss last week, which was really good. I mean, Matt Crowell only had 55 yards of passing at halftime, and Ole Miss is really known for how they uh, really uh, hurt you through the air, and I thought Auburn was able to do very well at, at, at that during the game. But, you know, still, overall, the, the defense, the secondary, has been prone to giving up these passing yards. So they're going to have to shut down Terrence Marshall. They're going to have to shut down Miles Brennan uh, when, he's in the, when he's passing. And I think Auburn is going to really have to dominate also the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. The defense has to get pressure. They're going to have to get sacks. But also the offensive line on their side of the ball, they're going to have to block because um, LSU's defense is leading the, um, the SEC right now and sacks and I think you know despite the losses that they've had this is still a good LSU Tiger secondary they've got Derek Stingley he's going to go up against uh, against Seth Williams more than likely and that's going to be a huge matchup right there one-on-one uh, -on -one with each other so I think I'm looking at the secondary of both teams and the offensive line. I think one of the keys for the Tigers in order to beat LSU is going to be keeping that offense a dual threat. And last week they really looked to be clicking on all cylinders, but this week it's even more so important. And I think like you mentioned, that secondary defense, just being able to stop whoever's at quarterback, whether it's Brennan or Finley, and that's really going to be important. The defense needs to fix those little mistakes. But on top of that, I mean, Auburn has some key defensive players. I mean, Colby Wooden is leading the SEC right now in tackles, and he has, I think, 6.5. And he, redshirt freshman, really proved himself last game. And I think that these players just need to look on, work on working together and not necessarily just, like, getting that teamwork and the connections, and those are going to be key for stopping that passing in the air game. But on top of that, Roger McCreary talked about the importance defensively of just fixing those fundamentals, especially in such a big game like LSU when the stakes are very high. I feel like it's all about the little simple mistakes that we have throughout these LSU games. It's just one mistake that would lead to us losing. So I feel like we just got to play with fundamental and play with technique and come with the strategy that coach has taught us. And I feel like if we follow all those stuff that we do this whole week, I feel like we'll come to a win. Additionally, offensive lineman Brodarius Ham talked about how important it is for the offensive line to just keep those consistencies and fixing those tiny mistakes in order to improve overall performance, which will be really important this week, especially after losing Brandon Council last week against Ole Miss. Um, pretty much just, we're, we're just growing as a group overall. Uh, I mean, we're trying to, we try to take a, the next step each week, uh, find something to get better at. Really, I feel like we have a lot of room to improve. Uh, Coach Bigner talks about that every week. Um, you know, Coach didn't want us to get a little better, but he feels like we can get a lot better. And, you know, like I said, just improve on the little things and, yeah. Andy, who is your player to watch this weekend? I'm going to go on the LSU side of the ball, and I'm going to go with Terrence Marshall, the wide receiver for the Bayou Bengals. Uh, coming off last season, he had a great performance uh, with the likes of Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. They were kind of a triple threat with Joe Burrow uh, throwing to them. And I think Terrence Marshall will be the guy again for uh, Miles Brennan or uh, Finley if he's to start. And I think um, Marshall is a guy that's going to have to be very heavily defended. I think Christian Tut. Uh, or Smoke Monday should go up against him. And I think they're going to have to really uh, cover him well or he could hurt the Tigers in the secondary. I'm going to have to keep an eye on Roger McCreary. The defensive player, He, the junior, he really had some outstanding game-changing plays last week that showed off his versatility, whether it be special teams, defense. He got the helmet stickers for special teams and defense. So he got two last week. And I think he's going to be riding high on past week's success and he's really been a leader on this team and I really think that he's going to be looking to shut down LSU. Now for our final segment, Pick'ems. First college matchup now that the Big Ten has started, Michigan versus Michigan State. Andy, who do you have? I'm going to go with the Michigan Wolverines here. They looked really good against Minnesota. They ran the ball well. They passed it well, but they also defended well on the road in Minneapolis. And I'm going to go with Michigan to win this game very easily. I, too, am going to have to pick Michigan. Michigan State fell to Rutgers last week. Not a very great season debut. Turned the ball over seven times. 
Michigan, on the other hand, have very impressive debut, and I think that this is not really going to be a contest. I think Michigan is going to walk out with a clear victory. Next up, we have Ohio State versus Penn State. Who do you have? This is going to be a good game. I think both teams are looking to get a signature win, but I think Ohio State will walk out of uh, Happy Valley with a win against Penn State. I just didn't see anything from, uh, from the Beavers uh, last week. I know Indiana beat them in a close overtime game, but I just think that they're uh, not as strong as they used to be, and I really like how Ohio State played. They torched Nebraska at home. Justin Fields only missed one pass. I think they're going to roll in this game. Led by Justin Fields, I do think Ohio State is going to beat Penn State. While their interior offensive line didn't look that great last week against a mediocre Nebraska team, I think that that is an easy fix, and it's not going to be an end-all, be-all, especially in this game. And I think the Buckeyes are going to get this win. Next up, we have... Texas A&M versus Arkansas. Who do you have? Well, these are two teams that are really up and coming in the SEC West. and I didn't expect Texas A&M to be ranked in the top 10, but I also didn't expect Arkansas to have the season that they're having as well. And I think it's going to be a good game. It's going to be very physical. I think Texas A&M could be on upset alert, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think Texas A&M will walk out of Kyle Field the winner. Personally, I think that upset alert is going to happen, and I think Arkansas is going to beat Texas A&M. Sam Pittman has made great strides with the team, especially defensively, and under Felipe Franks, I think that the team offensively is really just going to try to roll, and they will have a disadvantage because they are not the home team, but I do think that they have impressive wins over Ole Miss and Mississippi State, and they almost beat Auburn, so I think Arkansas is really going to be looking to prove themselves in the SEC once again. For our last college matchup, we have Auburn versus LSU. Who do you have? This is going to be a tough game as well. I think both teams, you know, just they need a win. Auburn especially just to keep their momentum going through the season. But LSU, you know, had a week off. Then they played South Carolina, and they're starting to find their groove again. I thought, you know, last week they were able to really uh, get South Carolina napping and scored almost uh, 50 points. And I think Auburn will come out the winner, but it's going to be really close. I think LSU's defense will make it tough. But I just favor Auburn's offense, the way that they've played, the way that they're racking up yards and points the last couple weeks. And I think Auburn will come out victorious. A close game is inevitable, but I do agree. I think the home team has the advantage, and I'm going to have to go with Auburn. I think that the fans and the stands will definitely just instill that necessary confidence in the Auburn Tigers in order to sort get them to the heights that they need in order to beat LSU. But also, LSU has been pretty unreliable this season. They did win dominantly last weekend, but they were very desperate at home, and I think that that helped them. And I think that if Finley is at the helm of the offense, they're probably going to make some very spectacular plays. Or Brennan, either way, the offense is probably going to roll, especially if Auburn's defense struggles to fix those simple mistakes that have been present in past weeks. But I don't think it's going to be enough to overcome the Tigers and the confidence and the momentum that they're riding off of after last week. Now for the NFL. First up, we have Cowboys versus Eagles. Who do you have? Well, this is going to be quite an interesting tussle as the Cowboys are down to their third string quarterback and the Eagles are just not having a season like they expected. Uh, and I'm going to go with the Eagles since they're the home team. I just think the Cowboys have been very disappointing the last couple weeks and things are starting to spiral for them. And I think the Eagles will get this win. Carson Wentz had a great game last week, and that's why I'm going to go with the Eagles. I think that the Cowboys have struggled to protect their pass rush, and on the other hand, the Eagles have done really good at putting that pressure on the quarterback. And Ezekiel Elliott this year on the Cowboys hasn't really been as productive as expected, and I think that if he happens to be present at this game, he's going to put up a real challenge for the Eagles. But if he just continues to perform as he has in the previous weeks, I think the Eagles are going to win this one. But it could be a really good game. Next up, we have Saints versus Bears. Who do you have? I'm going to go with the Saints in this game. I think the Bears were just unlucky last week against the Rams, losing 24-10. to 10. I mean, they have been really good on defense, but I just think Alvin Kamara, Drew Brees are the key factors for the Saints. Although they don't have Michael Thomas, I think that um, they're still going to win this game on the road. It'll be tough, but I, I like the Saints in this game. I think this game is going to come down to offense, and because the Bears struggle with a lot of offensive challenges and Drew Brees really has it figured out, I'm going to have to go with the Saints. 
Nick Foles really struggled last week. And on top of that, I think that the Saints offense, if Alvin Kamara can just continue to get those hands off, it handoffs and run the ball down the field. I think that the Saints are going to be really hard to stop. Even though the Bears do have a talented defense, it's just the Saints are going to outrun them, and that's going to be the key to the game. Next up, we have 49ers Seahawks. Who do you have? This is going to be a really good game. I think both teams are really hitting their stride right now. The Seahawks, although they lost last week, it was really close and competitive. And the 49ers just blew out the Patriots in a game that they just dominated from start to finish. And I think the Seahawks will win this game, but the 49ers will make it competitive. I'm going to have to go with the 49ers in this matchup. While Jimmy Garoppolo has been off and on, almost like Jekyll and Hyde throughout the season, the defense of the 49ers really made a mess out of the Patriots last week. I mean, they intercepted Cam Newton three times, and it was not a pretty game to watch. But the, pa the 49ers did a really great job in that win. And Russell Wilson, like you said, they lost last week. I think that that might get into his headspace, especially as one of the front, one front runners for the NFL MVP. But I think that the 49ers are going to win this one. For our final matchup, we have Steelers versus Ra Ravens. Who do you have? This is probably the marquee game of the weekend. The Steelers undefeated and the Ravens just with one loss. They're, the Steelers are going on the road again to try to hold on to their undefeated record. And I don't think that they're going to do it. I think Lamar Jackson is the key factor for the Ravens. I just think that home crowd of, uh, is really tough. And also that Ravens defense will make things tough for Big Ben and the offense. And I just see the Steelers uh, falling in this game. The Steelers' offense has been pretty good, but it hasn't been dominant. But I do think that the key to the Steelers winning this game is going to be shutting down Lamar Jackson. And Jackson does like to scramble, and I think the Steelers are going to be looking for that. And if they can pinpoint that and just continue to put pressure on him, I think that that's going to be key for them to win this game. And the Ravens have actually made very few pass attempts this year. And I think that they are going to need to make more in order to, if they want that win over the Steelers, but I think the Steelers are going to be prepared for that. And I think that's really going to prove just how good the Ravens offense is. But I'm still going to have to go with the Steelers on this last one. That's all we have for you this week. Did you agree with our picks? Do you have a different player to watch? Head on over to our Twitter and let us know. For more news and sports updates, go to our website at eagleeyeauburn.com. That's all we have for you. Have a great weekend. I'm Delaney Barrow, joined by Andy Hewling, War Eagle.